Hi everyone and welcome to Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, maintenance and restorations. Please subscribe to our channel, watch the entire video and of course click on notifications to be first to learn about new videos. I'm Chris Cappadoni and this is a how-to video on how to replace brake pads on a typical passenger vehicle. All modern vehicles share the same basic design and operate in the same manner. Calipers and caliper mounting brackets may be different, may have different size bolts, but the number of bolts and their general location are pretty much the same across manufacturers. Today, I will be demonstrating front pad replacement on a GM vehicle. The process is the same for the rear pads as it is for Ford, BMW, and even Bugatti. Let's get started. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Drive. So what I'm doing today is on a... Uh, General Motors vehicle, this is a Buick, I'm going to be just replacing the front pads um, on uh, both the front uh, drivers and passenger side. So the first thing I, you needed to do obviously was lift the vehicle up, secure the back wheel with a, with a wheel chalk, and remove the wheel. So I've already done that so that you don't have to waste time watching that part. The next thing I need to do is I do not need to remove the uh, caliper bracket, but I need to remove the two bolts in order to remove the caliper so that I can gain access to the two old pads. So that's what I'll be doing. I've already measured and I there are two bolts back here, which I'll show, which are both 10 millimeter. Now on your vehicle, they may not be 10 millimeter. They could be eight millimeter. They could be 15 millimeter, depending on the size of the vehicle, but there are always two, um, bolts holding the caliper and caliper to the caliper um, bracket. So the next step for me is to remove those. So this is the top bolt of the caliper. I've attached the wrench with a 10 millimeter socket ready to loosen it. This is the one at the top and the one at the bottom is located right there. I'll both, both will be loosened and removed in order for me to remove the caliper and gain access to the pad. So that's the next step. Okay, I've removed the two uh, bolts. Here they are. They're not very big, but they do a very important job. So the next thing now is I have to wiggle out the caliper in order to gain access to the two worn pads. And all you do is kind of just kind of move and wiggle it out. This one is not too hard. Sometimes it's much more difficult. Now, when you remove it, you can see that it's attached to the hydraulic line. Do not let it hang because you'll ruin the hydraulic line. It might crack or bulge and then you're going to end up with a fluid leak which means your brakes aren't going to work so a lot of people like to zip tie them to the strut this one here i can just put here and it'll stay as long as i don't touch it now here are the two pads that need to be removed and it's just simple it's just sliding them out removing them the one at the back can be a little bit more difficult and you can see how worn they are they're ready, obviously, to be changed. The rotor is still good, so I'm not going to be replacing that. But usually, typically, what I'll do is um, replace the rotor as well as the pads so that I have a good contact patch. But you can see the contact patch, both on the front and the back, is quite good, which will mate very well with the new pads. So the next step for me is to remove the two old clips, hardware, um, and then install new ones. So I've just removed and reinstalled the new clip at the bottom. I'm going to show you what I do at the top. So it's really just a process, depending on how stuck they're in, is to remove it. And then here's my new one and install it back in the same way that the old one was. These are important because once you lubricate them here, they allow the pads to freely float. And as they wear, they'll be able to move freely closer to the rotor. So I'm just going to install it. And it's really just as simple as that. So they're ready to be lightly greased and then I can install the new pads. So when you buy um, a good quality premium pair of pads, what usually comes along with it is the, is the clips as well as lubricant. And so don't cheap out and get um, economy ones because you're not going to get the new clips and you're not going to get the lubricant which are very both very good in properly installing the pads um, so what I've done is already is I've already pre-dabbed and lubricated this one here now I'm going to do the top one and it's just a matter 
of applying some lubricant on the channel, front and back. You will also put this lubricant um, on the inner side of the caliper. So when the pad touches it, it again, it will allow it to freely move and not sometimes when you hear that squealing, that's one of the culprits is because it's the back of the pad is scraping or moving against the um, inner part of the caliper. So the next step now is to um, grab the pads and install them. Now, one important thing is each set of pads will have one of these little metal brackets. And what that is, it's an indicator that will show you, um, and it'll be an audible sound. It'll start scraping against the rotor when the pads are ready to be replaced. This one was, the old ones that I'm replacing were just at that, so I wasn't hearing it, but I, I monitor my brakes regularly, so I knew they needed to be replaced. Now, you need to reinstall them in the way that the vehicle, uh, the original pads were. So this one was on the back side, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to be reinstalling the one with the, with the metal clip on the inner side, which is where the original one was. There we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling, but it's in. And then the same process with the one on the outer side. And again, it's a matter of maneuvering it into place so that both the front and bottom go into place. And there you go. Both new ones are in. Now, like I said, I'm going to be lubricating the inner sides of the caliper which come into contact with the outer side of the pad to avoid um, squealing. This one has um, an anti-squeal pad which is good because um, premium ones usually have that to counteract it but it's always best practice to lubricate it as well. Now it's time to reinstall the caliper back on top of the new pads and you'll when you try and do it, you'll notice that it won't fit. And the reason for that is the piston here, this is a single piston caliper, has expanded as the two pads wear out. It go, it expands further so that it can hold the, the wearing pads closer to the rotor. With new pads, I no longer have enough room to do that. So the piston has to be manually pushed back so that it will fit over the new thicker pads. Now there are tools out there that you can purchase in order to do it, but um, my simple way of doing it is what I do is I grab a wood clamp or any sort of clamp as well as one of the old pads. I put the pad, old pad in that position there and then with the clamp I um, position it on the back side of the caliper and along the, and the other side of it against the worn out pad. And it's just a matter of tightening the clamp to force that piston back into, back into position. I can see it slowly moving back. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult, and what you can do is um, grab maybe a pair of vice grips so that you have more leverage, which I'll do. I 
can see that piston going back. Since these are new pads, I need to go back all the way. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, so I've depressed the piston back into its home position and I've lubricated the back side of the caliper prongs. Now I'm ready to reinstall it over the new pads, making sure not to damage the hydraulic line or kink it in any way. Just carefully wiggle this back into position. until both, both holes line up with the caliper so that you can reinstall the bolts. Sometimes you may have to move it around a bit. There we go. And I'll do the same with both and I'll tighten them both down. They have to um, be um, hand tight plus a quarter turn, turn. You do not want to over torque these because you'll strip them. And there we go. Next step is to inspect all your work. Make sure you didn't miss tightening any bolts. Check that they're all tight. Make sure that your hydraulic line is um, not kinked in any way and it, it looks uh, secure. There's no cracks in it. Um, then the next step is uh, to reinstall the wheel and then test your brakes and then you're done. Thanks for watching this short tutorial on brake pad replacement. I hope you found this informative and it facilitates you performing the work yourself. Remember to work safely and ensure your vehicle is properly supported no matter what maintenance you are performing. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and select the notification option. Drive, your source for automotive reviews, analysis, maintenance, and restorations.